Legacy Hour. I'm Andrew Cohen, estate planning attorney on your hometown station AM 1220 KHTS. I'm here with Ron Morgan from the local CPA firm Stern, Corey, Sreden, and Morgan. Welcome back, Ron. Thank you, Andrew. Now, you just got back, I believe, as we listened to the Beatles. You just had a fantastic excursion. Yeah, Where yeah I was in uh, Europe, mostly British Isles, for a couple of weeks. And that sounds awesome. Got to go visit Liverpool. And uh, and what did you see in Liverpool? I saw where Paul McCartney and John Lennon, the homes that they grew up in, and went through the story of how they met, and George came on, and the Casbah Club, which uh, we fantastic. talked about. No, I'm getting chills. <laughs> That's great. I, I love it was that. was exciting. Who, what kind of people were there? You know, was it, who, who was there on the, in, at, at that museum? Um, Multi-generational? There, there was, was um, mostly, surprisingly, it, it was. It, it was uh, from young people and older people like me. Right. Uh, but but, but the, the, what I'm thinking of in my mind is, you know, I, I, my show is The Legacy Hour. And I see that. And the Beatles are just important to me. I listen to it all the time. And you see they were able to create a legacy that lasts. And people can come with kids, multi-generations, and do something that lasts. And in my mind, that's what what you and I do every day, that's what this is all about, is trying to build what you have now and minimize taxes, increase wealth, and get everything done so you can leave a good legacy for your kids. That, that's, I, I, that's I, I firmly believe all that. Yeah, definitely, and that's a big part of my job is to make sure my clients are able to keep as much money as they can. Right, and on that, one of the topics that, you know, b before the show you and I were talking about that we wanted to discuss today was you know, within the, the five biggest mistakes that people make. And we're talking about beneficiary designations on life insurance. IRAs, 401ks, qualified retirement plans. That is not owned by the trust, but it's can't part be. of... It, it can be. It, 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 it can it, be. It, it, it can't be. They're technically separate right. trusts. Legally, they're separate trusts. The, the IRA. The IRAs, right. retirement plans... Right. Same thing. They're there. So a trust can be the beneficiary or an individual can be the beneficiary. And part of what I do all the time is make sure that in the funding process that the IRAs are properly set up to have the right designated beneficiaries on them. Now, as we well know, an IRA, Roth, regular IRA, you're trying to postpone or avoid taxes, grow as much as possible. Different. Some you pay taxes up front and it grows tax-free forever. The other one, you get a tax deduction and then you pay it all later. When someone passes away, let's say a husband passed away, what happens to that IRA? It goes to the designated beneficiary, who's ever, when it was set up or the last time it was changed, it goes to that person or persons. Okay. And if that person or persons no longer are around, that, that they predeceased, then it goes to a secondary beneficiary Second. that was designated. Right. So when we have the term rollover, it rolls over to a spouse. If it's a surviving spouse, yes, it would. Right. It there's an option. You do not have to, the surviving spouse does not have to roll it over into their own IRA. Right. That is an option, and it's used a lot. But now, it can't. It it's it could be just kept as an inherited IRA. Same thing with uh, if it was a non-spouse that inherited. They, it would be kept as an inherited IRA. And how is an inherited IRA different from a, a rollover? What's important for uh, the, people to know The about. difference is that uh, distributions have to start taken out the following year after death. When it's an inherited IRA. When it's an inherited right, so IRA. It speeds up that income tax process much, much quicker. Right? When it's rollover to the spouse, you automatically you get the stretch, it's there, it's theirs, and they don't have to start taking it out until the required... They're 70 and a half. Exactly. That's but if correct. it goes to your children who are maybe 18, 20, whatever, what then, happens then? Then they have to start taking out a minimum distribution. If it's if there's one beneficiary, uh, it's based on their life expectancy. Right. So you're talking about another 60, 70 years if they're 18, 20 years right. old. If they, have it, if they have the stretch. But if right away they start paying taxes. Yes. Right. Unless it's a Roth IRA. Okay. Unless it's Roth. Now, so what do you tell folks, you know, for th for that? You know, people come and they don't have anything set. What what sort of mistakes have you seen? Maybe folks have made either well, by omission or commission. Well, the 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 concerns that they have is the, if their uh, if their spouse has already passed away, then they can they want to leave it to their children, but they may have concerns about their 
uh, children not able to handle the money. And, right. and that's a big concern because once they're named and they inherit it, they can take it all out at once it, and get hit with a lot of taxes and, and blow it on that's whatever. That's huge, right. And that's, a, that's a, a big interplay between what, what we both do is that you leave it to the person, but if kid, I know if I had a lot of money when I was 18, 19, I could conceivably have blown it all. And if you can put it in a trust and do it and have it set up properly, you can allow the trustee then to still use the money for your kid's education, to still distribute that money for birthday gifts, et cetera, and then give him money when they're older and they're established and they're more mature. Exactly. And that you have to make sure you have a successor trustee that understands that and you can trust. Right, right. Well, we need to, we need to break, and I really, really want to thank Ron for being here today. Ron, how can folks get in touch with you? Uh, my office number is 661-286-1040. And my email address uh, is ron at sksm.com. That's S is in Sam, K is in kangaroo, S is in Sam, M is in mary.com. That's awesome. Terrific, Ron. I really, really appreciate being here. This is the Legacy Hour with Andrew Cohen on your hometown station, AM 1220 KHTS. Talk to you guys next time.